Scene one, take. Okay. Hello, I'm John, and today I'm going to be talking about my favourite documentaries. <laughs> A one continuous. So if, if, if you like, if it stops recording, just tell me and I'll pick up. One of my favourite documentaries I watched when I was about 10 years old was a pseudo documentary called The Day That Britain Stopped, where very literally all travel in Britain stopped. During the very early 2000s, the BBC funded a set of uh, speculative fiction documentaries which took a look at events that have not occurred as of yet. Uh, one that I watched recently was uh, Smallpox 2002, which was set on after it came out, which is over, like, over 20 years old now and it followed the events of a worldwide pandemic, which is ironic considering the time we're in today. Yeah. Which is ironic! Which is ironic! Oh my god. The style of these documentaries were very modern day ARG style. Mmm, a flower on your sock, wow! The Day That Britain Stopped is a retrospective look on an event that took place on the 19th of December 2003, so you can imagine it coming out years later. You can imagine it coming out years later of this alternate timeline, so to speak. You're right. You can imagine it coming out years after the event of this so-called alternate timeline. It even opens with uh, stock footage of destruction from previous events and shows that were produced in the years prior. Some of the uh, attributes that you could take from expository documentary that this weirdly falls under, even though it's an event that hasn't happened, um, is the voice of God that plays right from the beginning. And I, I love that, the voice of God. Are you playing Minecraft? I love the voice of God for the fact that it sets the tone very well. His voiceover is combined with the interviews at the time and that gives a very chilling atmosphere because it goes from a man talking very monotonely about the situation before we cut to quote unquote real life experiences of the event. What's more interesting is that all the individuals are given lives, real lives. You get uh, information of their jobs past the year and what happened to them after the uh, event and I think that's amazing because it builds this true world and you get the sense that this could actually happen this could have happened and you sort of see the voice behind this the idea that this is a cry for help uh, as the British transport system is very underfunded and anything like this could happen at any point which is terrifying like a pandemic as we've now learned so you know anything can happen what did you do <laughs> This isn't the first speculative fiction documentary produced by the BBC. There was another one called The War Games, which was created in 1965, which told a very real story of what would happen if nuclear war broke out in the UK. And it focuses on what would happen uh, if it broke out in Kent. And it's very, very vivid to the point that it didn't actually come out till 1985 because people thought it would be too realistic and too scary considering it would be Cold War Britain at the time, which is ironic considering the 80s was still Cold War. But they fought, and I respect that. The final scene. Am I seducing you right now? Is this working? The expository element of this, which leads me to think that they want a right answer, is not only the cry for help for the British transport system, but for the lack of care. And it's definitely saying that we need to put more money into the transport system, as it's very underfunded and it's very not looked after. Um, I don't know if you've ever been on the London Underground, but it's the most scariest thing ever. You feel like you're about to die a lot of the time, and it's not very well maintained. Although I think one thing that's common with a lot of these documentaries is that it's very fear-mongering in nature and it's definitely trying to scare you into thinking about it more and more. Uh, and it works for the most part. Um, but I can see why it's no longer produced now and why there are less of them because it does bring about widespread panic and that's not something we need in the modern day. But it's still one of my favourite documentaries and that's why I wanted to talk about it here for you today. Take two. Just a little bit of a sound effect. Take two. Take two. No, it creates this. Oh, it takes this. It takes the sound. Um. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I heard that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get in the mood. Right, okay. <clears throat>